that not only are we finding the correct solution, but the strategies or the methods that we use to get there are just as important. So today as we go through our task, I want you to concentrate on your strategies. Concentrate on the ways that you go about solving the problem. Read it silently to yourself. So what I want you to do is to think about what could be a possible question for this problem. What could be a possible question? What would they want to know from this information? Starting with blue, share with your group. What do you think? Quickly. And I heard some of you got it. All right. It says, what fraction of the pan of brownies has been eaten? And there's another one here. What fraction is left of the pickle? Raise your hand if you thought of one of those, or maybe even both of them. Nice job. Half the battle, boys and girls, is to figure out what it is they want. So that's a good strategy. Just cover the question. Think about uh, the situation and think about what kind of question they might ask about that. So that's a good strategy. Okay, so I want you to think about this for about a minute. I don't want you to work on it. I just want you to think about it for a moment. How you would go about solving it. Think about the language of the problem. And then just before you start to work, talk about the problem together. Off you go. Explain it to me, please. Mm -hmm. you can bring it one, 
So now I have four groups of two, right? Instead yeah. of um, the whole part being divided into eights, now I have four parts of two parts in each. Um, your denominator is four now. How cool is that? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. This part relies on that one because she ate one eighth herself to see the taste of it. And so there was. Great job. And as I went around, I noticed that most of us had the same models. You guys are really good at using your models. Um, I particularly like the rectangular one because it actually did look like a pan of brownies. Now, I'm going to share with you a more efficient way of doing problems like this. Boys and girls, whenever you are adding or subtracting fractions, you cannot add and subtract fractions this way with unlike denominators. We have to think about what we know of equivalence, and we have to do what's called renaming. So we have to think about ways that we can rename these denominators, but not change value. So I thought about, well, if I multiplied it by 1, then I'm not changing the value. And I know that any time the numerator and the denominator are the same, that equals a whole. That equals 1, right? So I thought, okay. I think I'll try some of that. And I know that I can use multiplication to do this. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to put multiplication and I'm going to think about, since I'm with 4 and 8, I know that 4 and 8 are related. 8 is the multiple of 4. Think about it in your multiplication tables. 4 is the factor. 4 times 2 gives me 8. Hmm. So if I create a fraction that equals 1, that's going to end up giving me 8, I haven't changed the value, have I? I haven't changed the value. So I'm going to come over to the side, and then I'm just going to do my multiplication. What is 4 times 2? 8. eight. Absolutely. What is 1 times 2? 2. Yeah. Hmm. I ended up with 1 fourth equals 2 eighths.